Jets obviously undermanned man right now. You know, uh, if any team can be sympathetic and understanding what it's like to, you know, go through ebbs and flows of missing key parts to a team, it's certainly the Cleveland Browns. So we're going to sit down here today, give you some general thoughts on both teams, some key matchups headed into Sunday's affair at First Energy in Cleveland, Ohio. Some score predictions, some thoughts here again. You are locked on Browns. Your daily Cleveland Browns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome back Thursday on the Locked On NFL Network. You all know what that means. Crossover Thursday here to get you all prepped for Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern. Cleveland Browns, New York Jets. Crossover Thursday, Lockdown Browns, Lockdown Jess, your host from the Lockdown Browns podcast, Jeff Lloyd, at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd, Mr. Garrett Bush, Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, of course, co-host of the Lockdown Browns podcast, at GBush91, and one of the rarest to the rare, as far as social media is concerned, Mr. John Buchko, no at needed host of Lockdown Jets. John has been here for a while. We're going to sit down today, we're going to break it down. Uh, interesting game here. Um, that we're going to get to this week. Uh, you know, the Dan crossover Thursday. We appreciate everybody who makes Locked On Browns, Locked On Jets, our first listen every single day. Crossover Thursday is presented to you by our friends at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is so much fun and it's easy to play. No competing with other players, just you versus the projections available. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than the Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. It can literally take less than 60 seconds to enter. It is that easy. We love Prize Picks, and we know you will too. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on, all caps, no space. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. As I said, we're going to get into it here. We're going to kick it right off the bat. I'm going to start with John here. Um, you know, John, as everybody knows here, you know, I'm in New Jersey, so obviously I see a lot of the Jets news locally. Um, one thing I'm noticing is, you know, I, I think Robert Sala, of course, he's unhappy. His team did not win on Sunday, but I, I think everybody's in such a rush to judge this New York Jets team. And Robert Sala is kind of out there like, guys, the most important position in the entire sport. My guy's not here yet. You know, we didn't do everything we did this offseason for Joe Flacco. So I can understand Robert Sala being a little bit hot under the collar here as, you know, the Jets are transitioning here. Maybe the last week with Joe Flacco, we'll see the way it goes as Zach Wilson is slowly, slowly starting to participate a little bit in practice, but also looking at this matchup, maybe a wise move uh, that Zach Wilson is not going to go this week. Well, guys, it's always great to get together with you. The cursed franchises of the AFC meeting once again. Um, yeah. John, as we always said, it's homecoming. It always seems Jets Browns find some way to play every season. How many- how many times have we done this, Jeff? And we say one of these years it could be the AFC Championship game, and maybe we'll both be gray and old. But at some point, it'll be, it'll be Jets Browns of the AFC Championship game. Probably not this year, uh, at least for the Jets. I think you're right, and I think part of it's the residue of playing in New York. When you're the coach of a team that's not winning, there's always going to be criticism. You always got to deal with the fan, and fans are always going to be unhappy. And I think Salah is not a guy who's in his year plus with the Jets has been great at dealing with the media. I think it's always difficult when he, he he made a comment this week that he's keeping receipts on the people who doubt them. And I think a lot of fans took it as though they were talking, he was talking about the fans. And I think when you're perceived as going after the fans, you're never going to win the battle. But at the end of the day, you know what, when you lose games, you just don't don't look good. And I've said this on locked on jets. I feel like if you lose, no matter what you say, people aren't going to be happy. You know, no matter what, because I've listen, I've seen a lot of losing for the, through the years with the Jets. And I've seen coaches take every different approach. I've seen coaches try and keep it to cliches. I've seen coaches you know, show a little bit more personality. Nobody's ever happy when you lose. But those same traits, when you win, people tend to love you for it. Uh, so I, I, th- I think it's tough to judge Robert Sala right now. Last year, he did not have much of a team. Like you said, Jeff, I mean, he's playing Joe Flacco. And listen, Joe Flacco had a great – you guys saw him a lot in the AFC North. You know, you know, way back when, he was a solid quarterback. You know, was he elite? We'll leave that up to the audience to decide. Uh, big throwback. Uh, but 
he doesn't he's not playing with a full with a full team right now. Now, if we get to later in the year and they have Zach Wilson and Zach Wilson's not developing and the Jets are still losing and you know they're having another rough year, then I think it'll be fair to say, you know, is Robert Sala the right guy for the job? But right now, I, I agree with you. I think it's just tough. Jet, the Jets are in a rough spot right now with, with their quarterback situation. And you know, you look across the leagues, you know, you can win with a backup quarterback. I know the Browns won last Sunday with their backup quarterback, but it's not easy to do especially when you're when you've got a roster full of new players like the Jets have. And I guess that leads me to my question for you guys. We obviously have Jacoby Brissett playing in this game for the Browns. What are the expectations for him uh, as he runs this team in the early part of the season? Well, don't mess it up too much. Uh, I, I think when you look back at uh, at what we did and what we did well against the Carolina Panthers, it was a run game. Um, the run game kept us in the game. Nick Chubb was was tremendous. And I think Kevin Stefanski did a good job of mixing in Kareem Hunt. But for for uh, Jacoby Brissett, I think a lot of fans are, are – some fans are, are, are a little, you know, they think he's a little worse than he is, really is. Some people think he's a little better than he is, you know. Sometimes, you know, uh, what we go at is – Guys think that, you know, you're being negative because you're saying Jacoby Brissett is an average quarterback and he's a backup. Well, that's the reality of it. And what you want your backup to do is there were four or five throws that he could have probably made um, that he should have hit. All we need him to do is hit two of those. If he can hit one or two of those, that changes the complexion of the game that keeps people off the line of scrimmage. Uh, and it continues to to let you do what you want to do, which is run the football and lean towards your defense. So I think Jacoby Brissett is, is he didn't play in the preseason. I think he was a little rusty. I would have played him more. Me and Jeff talked about it a lot on the Locked On Brown podcast. That that wasn't the case. Coach Stefanski wanted to make sure that that he was upright and that he would be able to go into the game healthy. Um, so I think you see a little rust. You saw a lot of rust from a lot of quarterbacks around the league. Um, needless to say, but at the end of the day, I think what you want from Jacoby Brissett is to be steady, don't turn the football over, and make sure you can get points on the board when you can. There's no question. You know, there was a lot of stuff, and it looked like he was just playing at a slower speed, you know, with Jacoby Brissett. And look, you know, he's not the most athletic guy in the world, you know, a little bit taller. Um, just you know, there were things, and you know, one of the things on top of what Garrett is saying here, um, as far as you know, don't mess it up, you got to make the easy throws, you have to make the easy throws. And there were, there were simple, easy throws you left on the field. And you know, when you're going with your number two, those are things you can't get into, you, you just can't get into that instance. And unfortunately, he did, which made the game probably closer than it should have. And of course, maybe a couple of you know key you know missed assignments and coverage um, made it a game that is. But you know, you can't you can't just be I'm not going to make mistakes. You got to do some positive things as well. And I think that was one of the difficult things, um, you know, that Jacoby basically had a you know hard time with. And you know, I do think some of it was with Rust. I do, you know, just not enough time. And it's not like he's been here for years, and now is his time to you know get a little run here as the backup quarterback. Just, you know, it was a difficult situation for the Browns to handle it because keep in mind all summer it was, you know, oh, well, Deshaun looks like maybe it's six games. If that was the case, he didn't really care what Jacoby Brissett did in those six games. You were getting Deshaun Watson for 11. Once it became an 11-game suspension, obviously that switched things up tremendously and uh, kind of put the Browns and Jacoby Brissett a little bit behind the eight ball. We're going to get here. There's some key matchups here this week, uh, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, I, I know there's a lot of Browns fans who you know are also Ohio State fans. I know there is one certain player they are looking forward to uh, to see play this weekend. So we're gonna get to that. John Buchko, Garrett, Jeff Lloyd, your latest lo- – I'm sorry, latest crossover Thursday. Uh, locked on Browns, locked on Jets. Turo is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. With Turo, you can book any car you want, wherever you want it, from a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selections of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget across the United States, Canada, and the UK. Book a spacious SUV or minivan for a family road trip. Get a classic or luxury car for a special event, birthday, or a holiday. Find affordable economy cars if you're on a budget and just need to get from A to B. Test drive that new electric vehicle you've had your eye on to see if it truly fits your everyday life. Many tour hosts can even deliver the car right to you. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Ditch boring rental cars and find your drive at Turo.com. Well, welcome back, uh, NFL crossover. We got the New York Jets mixed with the Cleveland Browns. And make sure you subscribe to uh, Locked on Jets. Make sure you subscribe to Locked on Browns. And make sure you make each one of these podcasts your first listen wherever you are, whether you're in the New York tri-state area or if you're in the great state of Ohio and Cleveland and you're a Browns fan all around the country. 
Um, one of the matchups that I tell you what I'm interested in, and I think when you when your teams are not doing well, when you when you have a lot of guys out, one of the things that you want to do is you want to look to the positives. One of the positives that I look at is is the offensive line for the Cleveland Browns, but the defensive line, uh, specifically for the New York Jets, uh, Quentin Williams, a guy who had a pro football focus grade of a 92.1. Uh, his pass rush grade was a 91.9. Uh, he had uh, three hurries. Uh, he actually had a batted down pass as well. Uh, overall, his run defense was a 72.3. So, you know, that young guy um, out of Alabama, he's uh, he, he really did his thing. I think that's going to be a matchup that I want to see if the Cleveland Browns want to move the ball. Him in the middle against uh, uh, Ethan Posey. Are you guys really excited about this young guy? And is this one of the bright spots that you can look at uh, along with Sauce Gardner? as one of the bright parts of the future that could probably, you know, show up really well in this game. It depends on who you ask. Uh, I think there are lots of Jets fans who are a little disappointed in Quentin Williams, because as you pointed out, I, there was pretty good, he played pretty well in week one, but you look at the numbers, the numbers really weren't that great. Now i I personally, I care about, I, I don't care about like how your tackle numbers. I care about how you're, producing especially when you're playing in the middle of the line are you disrupting the play are you winning your assignments and i think quinnon williams did that well now you look at quinnon williams through his first couple of years in the nfl jets drafted him third overall i think there were lots of jets fans who were looking for him to be an all pro type of guy and he's not that he's a guy who his second year he was a borderline pro bowler got it was into, into December. He was playing really well. Then he got hurt, missed the last couple of games. That may have cost him a Pro Bowl spot. He's a very good player. To me, he's part of the solution. I think there are some Jets fans who are a little bit frustrated, though, that he's maybe not a little bit better, that he's not in that like all-pro contention. Because I think when the Jets drafted him, and part of this goes into the psychology of the Jets fan base. The Jets have spent a lot of high first-round picks on interior defensive linemen in the last 10, 11 years. And... They've been okay, but none of them have been like really superstars. And I think that the perception is, oh, here we go. Another guy, another defensive lineman is going to be good for a couple of years. Then he's going to, then we're going to trade him. I don't think it's fair to Quinn and Williams. I think Quinn and Williams is part of the solution. I'd like to see him get a contract, but I think that he's, uh, I think he's a really important building block for the Jets going forward. And, you know, I'll go to the other side of the ball, uh, the other team's defensive line. I'll tell you a matchup that scares me, and I have nightmares from a game the Jets and Browns played week two, three years ago, Miles Garrett, and that was a game when Adam Gase left Kelvin Beecham one-on-one -on -one with Miles Garrett all night. Miles go, yeah, you you guys probably loved it because uh, Miles Garrett destroyed the Jets that night, and this Jets tackle position, there are some question marks there. I, I got to tell you, Makai Becton got injured in training camp. The Jets signed Dwayne Brown. I still can't figure out how when Dwayne Brown had time to get injured, but somehow Dwayne Brown got injured prior to the start of the season, which means fourth round pick Max Mitchell's starting at right tackle for the Jets. And it's funny because you watch the game live on Sunday, Max Mitchell did not stand out as like a guy who was a problem, but then reviewing the film, I don't think he had that strong of a game. And it's kind of a double whammy because last year, George Fant had a good season at left tackle, but the Jets sent him a lot of help. And because now they're playing this rookie fourth rounder, they have to send Max Mitchell a lot of help it means George Fant has less help. And, he was not very good in week one with uh, you know, lining up against Baltimore's edge rusher. So I got to tell you guys, that's a matchup that scares me from a Jets perspective. Well, here's the thing. And, you know, Miles Garrett's first career sack, you know, came many, many moons ago, 2017, against the New York Jets. Miles um, Garrett, if he accumulates one and a half sacks on Sunday, will now be the Cleveland Browns all-time leader in sacks. So, yeah, and that's one for me. And the thing is, you're talking about Max Mitchell here. It's like, well, oh, you know, okay, kid, well, you know, you had a nice, you know, go of it. You got your feet wet. Here's to Davion Clowney. Um, yeah, he's not exactly Miles Garrett, but about as close athletically and intelligent. And even if you win against Davion Clowney, he is smart enough that he's going to get his hands in the air and most likely disrupt the pass that way. Joe Flacco, mobility was never his thing. So imagine you know what Joe Flacco is moving around like now. Um, one other one I want to get to you with, John, is you know I'd be remiss. I wouldn't be doing my job with all these Ohio fans. The wide receiver room, you know, uh, Corey Davis, you know, obviously Garrett Wilson. Um, you know, Elijah Mora, who was a player I absolutely loved coming out of Ole Miss. Garrett and I on Lockdown Browns this week. We did have former Ohio State defensive back Tyvis Powell. He was an NFL guy. Come on. Browns had some coverage lapses Sunday in Carolina, which made that a game that it should have never have been. And it does concern me because I think the Jets one through four here 
might bring a better one through four wide receiver unit to the table than Carolina did on Sunday. I think it's a solid group. You know, I don't know that there's that number one guy, that go-to guy you're on the passing game through. Now it could be Elijah Moore. I think eventually it could be Garrett Wilson. I, you know, I, I never want to put high expectations on a rookie though, but I got to say Garrett Wilson looked really good in his debut. Uh, he was kind of rotating in and out, but I'll tell you, there was one play that was spectacular. It was a third down play. It was kind of a broken play. He broke his route, came back to the ball, caught it about I don't know, eight to 10 yards short of the sticks, made like three guys miss and almost came within a half yard of picking up the first down. I mean, it's a sign of things to come. It's a really exciting, uh, develop, a really exciting guy to watch. Uh, I, I think that these these are really solid receivers the Jets have. The question is whether Flacco could get the, the ball because when I watched the film, one thing that became clear to me is Flacco, it doesn't seem like he trusts his arm anymore. And, and unless it was a wide open window, he was looking to check the ball down. I got to tell you, there were some plays where he's dropping back. He's got his eye on the running back the whole time. And he's just, he's just going to dump it off to Michael Carter or Brees Hall. And that could produce some results for the Jets because both of those guys could be dynamic players in space. But I, I agree with you guys. I think that there are some potential matchups that could favor the Jets at the receiver position this year. The question is whether Flacco can deliver the ball. And I'll tell you guys, while we're talking receiver, a matchup I'm looking forward to, and it's partially from a Jets perspective, it's kind of a barometer matchup, Amari Cooper versus Sauce Gardner. Sauce Gardner had a really good week one. He, I don't, you know, he, he gave up nothing in preseason. In fact, I don't even think he was tar he was thrown at in preseason. I think this is a really interesting matchup because Amari Cooper brings such professional <clears throat> route running. He's very, you know, very smart receiver. If Sauce Gardner holds up against Amari Cooper, I think Jets fans will be very excited because I think it's a sign he'll be something special. But it is a tricky matchup for a rookie going up against a guy who runs routes as nuanced as Cooper does. Yeah, I, you know, I, I thought Sauce Gardner played a really great game. Um, 56 total snaps. Uh, he was only targeted. Uh, he was only only uh, targeted three times. Uh, only one lot, one reception for eight yards. I mean, that's that's great um, production from a guy out of Cincinnati. And I'll tell you what, he was to me. I, I mean, he he didn't give up a touchdown his whole life in Cincinnati. So when you think about um, what he's able to do, I like his size. Um, he's going to have a, a good matchup and a barometer against Mari Cooper because Mari Cooper. If we could have had Jacoby Brissett get him the ball, he was open a few times for big plays. Uh, he's one of the best route runners we have in this league, and his footwork was was on display uh, against Carolina in week one. I think that's a really good, intriguing matchup. I like that one out there. And, uh, you know, it, it'll be – I'll be anxious to see how many times uh, they allow Jacoby Brissett to put the ball up, right? I, I think the sweet spot for him uh, is somewhere around 25, 27. Um, I, you know, I, I wouldn't expect a 34, 35. Um, that's a recipe for disaster because if he's throwing the ball that much, that means we're not running the ball. We're not getting the production we want from up for the ground game. So for me, I'm really interested in that position, that, that matchup. I think it's going to be a good one. And, and to, just for the record, I think sauce Gardner is going to be one of the, um, one of the better corners in this league, uh, in terms of what he can do, he footwork, athleticism, size, he fits right into what. Um, you know, what, what, what you want in the corner right now when you want to get to shut people down, especially as much as we they pass the ball in the AFC. And I think the craziest thing is it almost kind of seems like the reputation carried to the NFL. And it's not like he came from Alabama or the SEC um, because nobody's really like, they're already nervous of him. And, you know, normally, you know, what you would just say, rookie corner, prove right. it. Um, and it doesn't really seem to be the case just yet. I mean, it seems like his reputation carried over to the NFL as he came here. And, you know, we'll see how it works with Buffalo Wild Wings as they, you know, invent the sauce sauce here in New Jersey. Uh, um, and and yeah. let's, we're going to be honest, Buffalo Wild Wings needs all the help they can get. So hopefully they can smoke one out of the park uh, here I, with the. Uh, I actually had Sauce Gardner on Locked On Jets a few weeks back to talk about Sauce Sauce. And I had it for the game. And I got to be, maybe I shouldn't say anything because I, I thought it was kind of mediocre. But Sauce Gardner's that's, corner. He, that's a you got to you do some justice. You got to do some justice for Sauce Gardner, guys. Come on, now. You got to do some what? justice. What happened to B Dubs, man? That used to be the go to. Ooh. It was, it was, but like everything, you know, it either runs it, either if you don't adapt, you, you kind of just stay where you're at. Uh, we're going to get to here. We're going to do some game predictions here. We're going to do some final thoughts. Crossover Thursday, locked on Jets, locked on Browns, Jeff Lloyd, John Buchko, Garrett Bush, uh, breaking it down for you here 
Um, you know, big one here. You know, Jets one. I mean, uh, Browns one and zero, looking to go two and zero as they host the Steelers that Thursday night. Jets one and one, maybe start to show a little positivity here. And then maybe Zach Wilson comes into it. Continue all this and more here on Crossover Thursday. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Find all the latest football league developments, game matchups, news and podcasts, including this year's opening week games. Bet Online is also your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, where the game starts. Welcome back to Locked On NFL Crossover Thursday. Uh, we got the Jets this week. Jets are locked on Jets, locked on Browns. Uh, and we're going to get to the predictions, guys. Uh, let's let's jump right off into it. Uh, you know, predictions for this game. You got the Browns who are looking to go 2-0. I, I think they haven't been 2-0 since, like, Truman was in office or something. And, and then we have the Jets that are looking to get on the board here. Um, I think if the Jets can get, it'll be a big coup for the Jets to, to get uh, a win in Cleveland. Um, I think you guys get the unveiling of the new elf in the middle of the field. So we don't know if that's going to be lucky elf. or good. <laughs> uh, your thoughts on predictions. Um, and can the Jets come out come out of here with an upset? Because I, I think the Browns are uh, favored by six points. Um, can, they, can they get enough to go uh, to win in Cleveland? I was reading about that elf. Uh, that was like one of the funniest things I've read all week. I mean, I, um, I think they can. I think that this is going to be a low-scoring game. I think both teams – have question marks at the quarterback position right now in their passing games so it's going to come down to, i think the running backs are going to be featured in this game a lot both teams have you know the browns have a proven running back duo in chubb and hunt the jets have a young running back duo with a lot of potential michael carter and Brees hall i think the path for, to victory for the jets is those two guys have a big game for them. And I think the Jets may need to dial up some gadget plays. I, I don't have a lot of faith in Flacco right now. And as I said, I'm not sure he's going to be willing to push the ball down the field. Last year, Mike LaFleur, the offensive coordinator, was very creative. He was able to dial up some gadget plays that ended up uh, resulting in some, some nice gains for the Jets. I think they'll need to do that. I think w these backs are going to need to break big plays. Maybe, maybe it'll be a Garrett Wilson or Elijah Moore taking a screen a long way. The Jets also played pretty good defense last week. So, you know, if they can get a turnover, and I think, you know, it, this game could come down to which quarterback avoids the big mistake. And for all of my criticisms of Flacco, he only he threw one interception last week, and it wasn't really his fault. It was a play where uh, tight end Lawrence Cager fell down. I'm concerned in a, what could be a tight game, special teams for the Jets, because their punting was shaky last week. And Greg Zerline, the kicker, missed a field goal and an extra point. So special teams play could be an issue for the Jets. I I, I don't know. I, I have my head telling me the Browns probably win this game. You know, Browns at home. Browns are a more talented team. My heart's telling me the Jets have a shot in this game. So I guess for my listener base, I, I don't. I picked the Ravens last week. I don't think I can uh, – face my listeners if i pick if i pick against the jets again so i'll say i'll say that somehow the jets pulled the upset we'll say Brees hall you know Brees hall michael carter have both have big games jets avoid the mistakes and somehow pull come out come out with a victory that's how about that i'm gonna go with this here i i think i think the first thing i agree kind of what john is saying because look robert sala is going to say I, if I'm going to lose, it's not going to be to Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. I really, truly believe the Jets are going to sell out to stop the run. I think, though, Joe Woods is going to be the same theory. If I'm going to lose, it's going to be because that old guy over there beat me. Um, so they're going to sell out against the run. So what does that mean? Somebody, somewhere, it, it's going to be about a, a missed tackle. It's going to be about a running back juking somebody. Um, I, I think the Browns are going to win this. Look, this place, look, Browns home openers are always off the track. Because nobody talked themselves into the possibility of this year being the year like Cleveland Browns fans. And that's what makes them what they are. They will go in, they will go into the home opener thinking that this is their year. So this place, and look, they are geeked about this elf. I, I can't even I cannot even deny how fired up people are about this damn elf being at the 50 yard line. And look, I need to see it firsthand because it better be the baddest looking elf that ever existed. Uh, but this is the route they went. Um, but, you know, I, I think that's what it's going to come down to. Um, and the other thing is, look, 
Jacoby Brissett, Joe Flacco. If you said he was looking at dink and dunk all last week, that ain't going to work because, you know, Jeremiah Wusikoromo or Anthony Walker, they are going to be all over these backs out of the backfield. Jacoby Brissett, 18 to 34. It's not going to cut it. Um, you know, the, the Browns do have a soft schedule early, but once you start getting to these better teams that are coming down the road and Jacoby Brissett, he can't step out. He's got to be the quarterback for these games. Deshaun Watson's not going to be here for that. He needs to play at a quicker pace. He needs to get through his read progression faster. Um, and he also needs to understand that he has Amari Cooper for a reason. I think the Browns are going to win. I, I, I feel bad for the Jets right now because they're not the team that they think they are. And there's no way for the Jets to truly judge who they are until Zach Wilson gets back under center. And, and it is just that simple. And, you know, look, the Browns were matching up with Joe Flacco three and four years ago as he was ending his career with the Ravens. So the fact that we're going for full circle here and facing Joe Flacco again, I, I just think the fact that it's on the road, the place is going to be loud as heck. And, you know, they'll continue to feed Chubb and Hunt, and eventually, you know, they're going to get theirs. I do agree maybe on the low-scoring aspect, you know, maybe, a, you know, and I, I never want to go traditional, you know, 19, 16, 19, 14, some sort of oddball. But, yeah, I believe Cleveland's going to be ending up 2-0 and and facing what's going to look like a really, really big matchup on Thursday Night Football as the Steelers come to town. Well, I got the easy job here. I've listened to what both of you said. I could just take the best of both worlds and just sink it into my own take, and I look great. Um, but, I'll, you know, I, I'll take what you guys said, and I'll say this. Um, I think this game boils down to this. Cleveland Browns offense will be, um, we have Nick Chubb. We're just going to see how many times we can run it and if you could tackle him, if you could tackle him uh, three, four times in a row, you'll it'll be a low scoring affair. However, if they do not tackle him, it's going to be a long day. Like they can't let the Jets can't let him get 147 yards. If the Jets want to win, they need to stop the Cleveland Browns run game uh, on the first two downs and make Jacoby Brissett a passer. Third and eight, third and nine, third and seven and a half. That's where you want to be because then you get the opportunity to take pre play action out of the out of the mix. If you're the Cleveland Browns, it's the same kind of story, but it's on the opposite side of the football. You want to no big plays. The one thing that Cleveland Browns are susceptible to is miscommunication in the back end. They've done it against the Kansas City Chiefs. They've done it early in this season. And one thing that you have, you have Garrett Wilson. You got guys on the other side of the football that can take it to the house if you want to mess up. Uh, I, I like what they're going to do. I like some of the things. And Joe Flacco, like you said, he threw the ball a lot last week and didn't have that many turnovers. The Browns need to get turnovers, score on defense. I think they do get a turnover or two on defense. I think they run the ball efficiently. I think um, Nick Chubb breaks a long one. And I think late Kate York kicks a couple extra field goals to make it look a little bad, worse than it was. I got the Browns winning this game 30 to 17. When you said you were taking the middle ground, I thought you were going to pick a tie. <laughs> nah, you can't, <laughs> you can't fence ride over here. No ties, no ties. Well, and to, to get to what Garrett's point, and just one thing, um, you know, I think a lot of people were like, oh my God, well, the Browns almost lost it. But did, Garrett and I feel pretty confident that the way that game ended for the Browns on Sunday did them more good than people think because. This team, obviously, in a tough spot right here. Can we tread water till Deshaun Watson gets back? Can we? It's a big question. We don't know. And then during that game, it looked like, all right, this is good. This is a team that maybe can do what they need to do for this time. Oh, wait, now it's not. But then they were able to amp it up and close it out like they did. You know, there's a lot of guys in this locker room, you know, who are really solid football players, and they did not appreciate that 99.9% of any coverage Cleveland Browns related wise over the past 60, 70, 80, 90 days was based on a quarterback who had never taken a snap for them. They were, I mean, so these guys are aggravated. They're agitated that the coverage was not about them and they're very good players. And it's a really good locker room, one player notwithstanding. Uh, I don't know if they're going to go out there and drop 30. I don't know if this team's ready to drop 30 on any of that, but we'll see. It's going to be an exciting one. There is no question about it. Um, Jets Browns, it's been a rivalry for years now. Certainly not in the same division, but they seem to find a way to cross pass every season. Uh, so one o'clock, First Energy Stadium weather looks like it's going to be a, you know a nice looking fall Sunday. Low eighties, one o'clock start at First Energy. Um, you know if, if you got nice weather in First Energy, you don't really have to worry about the wind. Everybody knows how that drill works. Once those temperatures drops, that's when you worry about the wind factor. 
Uh, he is John Puchko. Also, uh, he is the host of the Lockdown Jets podcast. Uh, make sure you follow and subscribe, whether it is on your favorite podcast platform, of course, on YouTube. Garrett Bush at GBush91, also part of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Myself, Jeff Lloyd, at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd. You can find Lockdown Browns on your favorite podcast app or, of course, available now on YouTube. Uh, the growth over there has been tremendous last you know few days uh, look Garrett and I are just trying to give you the greatest content we can and with the opportunities we're given now with the growth of the show here you know we have a, a fantastic Rolodex I guess we can bring in at any given time you got to hear from Tyvis Powell this week you got to hear from Joe Thomas last week uh you know we'll try to just you know, bring you guys the best that we can as we go through here you know as the weeks go on uh it's been a blast it's always good to sit down with this uh you know with fellow hosts here you know we don't have an office here for Locked On. So this is about as close as we can get face-to-face as many people have for the last two years, zooming it up here and basically getting to meet everybody that way. But I hope everybody, you know, sits down. Most importantly, look, it's Sunday. It's your day off. You all enjoy football. You all love football. Sit down, enjoy your family, enjoy your teams. You know, best team will win. We'll see how it all plays out. But it's been Crossover Thursday here on the Locked On NFL Network, your team every day.